Voting, Horace Mann. Education then, beyond all other devices of human origin, is the great equalizer of the conditions of men, the balance wheel of the social machinery. Our guest today proves this point. An educationist with over 24 years of experience and expertise in handling the 360 degree domain of education, with a proven record of success in the business management of schools, curriculum design and implementation, coaching and mentoring of school leadership, teacher and leadership professional development. Well, we welcome Deepa. Deepa Bhushan from uh, the CP Goenka Group. Tell us about your journey. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Well, I started my journey as a preschool teacher uh, at that time. Really had not thought about, you know, where I was going. Just thought, okay, this is something that I can do with my free time. Uh, it will take less time. But I saw the impact that I could have in classrooms on young children. And that somewhere got me onto the path of saying that this is something that I want to do. I can make a change. Uh, I can make a difference uh, in children's lives. And uh, taught in a preschool for a few years, uh, studied further, uh, went ahead to teach in higher grades, went ahead uh, to do curriculum design because I realized that I didn't want to be limited to the four walls of the classroom, uh, you know, and certain challenges that we faced with larger numbers, a limited amount of time, and uh, so wanted to do much more, went into curriculum design, where I could let my mind fly, uh, you know, with creative ideas. How could we make learning more meaningful, uh, more fun, more engaging for children was uh, what I was thinking. And uh, from that, uh, I said, okay, not only for the younger years, but we could do it for uh, the higher grades, we could do it for young adults, uh, we could do it for adults too, and uh, grew further in that space. So of course, uh, when you're creating and uh, you do stuff like this, uh, people come and tell you, you know, this is not possible, how can you do it? Uh, you know, we're limited by so many factors. And so I said, okay, let me show how it can happen within a school system and uh, then moved on to being the principal of a school, uh, in international school, then uh, managing the operations of schools and leading others to understand that learning could be made meaningful uh, for children uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, dealing with the challenges that you face in today's scenario, that, that schools Correct. face in today's scenarios. So how we could do this and I think uh, it's been a journey that has got me here. So, from just a hobby to full-time here, yes, right? Totally. And I think education is all the better for it, right? Thank Considering you. the slew of awards from the National Award for Excellence, uh, for outstanding work in the field of education, to the best director of the year, and I'm not talking about movies, schools, International School Awards in Dubai, your cup of awards brimmeth over. Um, Collaboration rather than competition has always been your forte and it's paid you rich dividends. Yes, uh, very true. Uh, I strongly believe uh, that collaboration uh, in every sphere of uh, schooling uh, could really uh, make us grow uh, by leaps and bounds. And uh, that is something uh, I think that is a space that we all must work with. So whether it is within your teams or outwards with other schools, there are some beautiful uh, educational practices uh, that are happening in today's times. Uh, not only uh, you know abroad, but within India too. But these are small pockets and isolated to some extent. Uh, collaboration allows for a space of bringing in change uh, to the extent that we're looking at, you know, like you're looking at a mass change uh, to happen within education. And if that needs to happen, collaboration is a must. We must uh, understand best practices of around the world, uh, within India, and uh, apply them within our context. Fantastic. And continuing with the best practices and the exciting changes happening abroad and within India, um, one of the significant changes uh, brought about in the 21st century is that of advanced technology in education. Schools are now more diverse 
especially in comparison to the 19th century classroom. As director of schools for the CP Goenka group of schools, how do you inspire your teams to effectively manage change? Uh, well, change is a given. That is something that we all must understand and know about, uh, but not easy. Uh, so, uh, you know, there is this amazing book by John Quarter called uh, Our Iceberg is Melting, which talks about change management and how do you uh, ensure change happens in the right way. And uh, this is a book that has inspired me. Uh, the education space now uh, is very dynamic. Actually, every space, uh, you know, with the kind of advancements that are coming through in technology. So how do you hold on to something uh, from the past, which is a best practice, to bringing it into today? We've all studied in a particular manner, so but naturally we end up teaching in the same way. But today we're dealing with technology which is far, far ahead. Uh, so if you go to many schools, uh, even today, if you ask teachers, uh, and this is, I'd say, wide scale, even if you ask a teacher that does she use technology to teach, uh, she'll say yes. And if you ask her what is she doing, she'll tell you, I use PPTs. Okay. Now, PowerPoint presentations, uh, is what technology is about for them but really technology has advanced to such a great extent in today's time so um, I think one of the things that we need to do is continuously mentor and coach the teachers uh, it is not a one-day thing that you've trained somebody for the new technology and you've gone off uh, it doesn't help at all it's a lifelong process it's a lifelong process and you need to coach and mentor continuously for them to see the benefits of applying this for their learners. Uh, so normally we teach what we want to teach, but times today are different. We need to teach what our learners need and what will engage them. Because unless uh, you do that, your learners are not listening. And also the way they want to learn. And completely. Yes. So uh, they're not going to listen to you. Uh, uh, we know that attention spans are going shorter and shorter. And so if we want to ensure that children listen to us, and are geared uh, for a future ahead. We're also preparing them for a future ahead. Perfect. So if we want to teach them today, uh, the technology that's today is also not going to be there tomorrow. Perfect. So you teach them how to use technology for their benefit and it could be any technology. There's so much AI, uh, you know, VI, VR, yes. AR, whatever. There's so much coming through. Absolutely. Uh, we are sometimes confused with those acronyms, but yes. uh, uh, teachers need to be equipped with the skill rather than a technology. So the skill to use technology is what uh, teachers need to be equipped with. Because technology is in today, passe tomorrow. Totally, Absolutely. totally. Yes. Even learning has become more liberalized today, as you were saying, right? Uh, changes in almost every sphere of learning. Um, students today are the primary benefactors of learning compared to when teachers were some years ago. Um, do you think formal and informal education are somewhere losing their identities and merging into one? Completely. Uh, in fact, that's the way it should be. Our life, have you ever thought about this? That, uh, you know, I'll get up in the morning and I'll do, uh, in our work life, I'm going to be doing math from uh, 8.30 to 9. Uh, from 9 to 9.30, I will do English. And from 10 to 10.30, I will do science. In life, we never work like this. You're making a timetable sound so bad. Exactly, because in life, we don't work like this. Exactly. But in uh, in schools, really, uh, that's what we teach our children. So these areas of formal and informal learning need to actually merge together. And today, schools are no longer just, uh, you know, areas to teach or to learn. They're actually teaching you about life, uh, really how to deal with life in a larger space. So uh, the role that society played a long time back or parenting played a long time back is no longer the role that they are playing. It's actually something that a school today needs to uh, do. So if today if there's an issue, uh, say a child is not uh, doing well or not eating well or not uh, you know, mentally not stable, the responsibility has moved from the home to the school, school. for exactly. a school to look after the child rather than the home and uh, therefore formal and informal learning has to merge together 
because the school has a much larger impact and plays a much larger role Absolutely. for children today. And uh, there is a paradoxical situation here too, like a typical conundrum. Uh, the parents today are still averse to the use of technology, right? I mean, uh, they don't want their children to get too hooked on the technology. Whereas education today, as you just said, is not just using technology, but becoming skillful with adapting to new technologies that are coming in. So, uh, how do we manage this? Well, one of the things uh, I think is for parents to be educated in today's times. Uh, you know, so uh, these children who are coming up today are the digital natives. We aren't. Uh, so, to take technology away from them would be doing a disservice to them. Uh, so, we hand uh, technology to them, we let them work with it, but we also teach them how to not let it take over them. Technology is an enabler. Yes, totally. That's the role. That's the role. And uh, uh, these children are very highly equipped. I mean, today, if you are looking at any technology at home, you bring in a laptop or a phone or a new phone. I mean, you take hours to kind of crack it open, but you give it to a youngster in your house and they will have it ready and done with. And they're going to kind of hand it over to you and say, you know, this is the way to do it and uh, so I think it's so important to flip that space and trust children uh, to know what to do with technology but how to manage it is something you need to teach them. I think that's the balance that needs to okay, come in. So that's the balance, yes. right? So, um, your natural instinct, you're a team player, a team leader and uh, this has led you to being becoming a catalyst for innovation. Um, you have set standards for excellence in instruction, assessment, teacher training, leadership training, development. How do you manage to drive the parent body? I'm coming back to that again, right? To work in synergy with the school community um, towards the harmonious progress of a child. Uh, so one of the things is, uh, you know, uh, realizing that for a child to benefit or to achieve to their optimum, uh, we have to realize that uh, we are the two, the school and the parents are jointly responsible for holding that achievement together. So we're not on two sides of the table, we're on the same side and we're actually kind of uh, giving the wings for the child to fly. So if we are the ones who are doing it, uh, we need to work together. And I think that's something that I always talk to parents about is, you know, um, we form a triad with the child at the top and the school and the parent below. And when we look at it in that way and we say, how can we join hands together to ensure that we work in the best interests of children and the best long term interest is what I say. Sometimes when you're so close to children, uh, you know, uh, parents see the short term interest. My child is upset. I need it to be sorted now. But what is the skill set that you're giving your child for life? So I always say this is look at the best long term interest of the child. And if we work towards that direction, uh, we're able to really uh, kind of do a lot for children. Okay. Uh, coming back to you, you've essayed multiple roles in your life, right? Uh, teacher, curriculum designer, head of the primary curriculum, head of curriculum from from K-12, right, from K-12, to uh, from the principal to your current assignment as director. Um, what are you next going to paint on the canvas of your life, right, uh, with your ever-growing palette? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I haven't thought of that. Uh, uh, it's just been a journey uh, and uh, it's just unfolded, I think, across the years for me. Uh, the only thing I see it as, uh, how can, uh, with the experience, uh, with the learnings that I have gained across the years, how can I ensure that maximum children and learners, uh, even adult learners, um, so when I work with teachers, coordinators, or principals, uh, you know, benefit from that and uh, how can they grow themselves into uh, better human beings uh, because that's who you take back into the classroom or into a right. school. 
uh, for children. So, just I think so. Better human beings make better teachers. Yes, totally do. And that's what you're working on. I totally. Yeah. I also believe that leadership uh, has a very large impact on schools. So where principals are concerned, uh, principals need to work as if and and you know uh, studies have proved that uh, you know that uh, schools with good leadership, children have higher achievement uh, in grades, uh, in extracurricular activities, and in all spheres. So a better human being school. So no way do you advocate that the senior most teacher becomes a principal. Not essential. Not not essential. Not essential. Yes. If if the skills are there, if the qualities are there, then why not? Then why not? Absolutely. Okay. You know, Deepa, the first time I saw you, uh, you were moderating um, a panel discussion in one of the educational forums. The next time I saw you, you were moderating a panel discussion in one of the educational forums. And the third time, and the fourth time, and the nth time, I think you are a star moderator, right? In these educational forums, tell me how are you, and um, when you moderate these educational forums, and when you have so many educators on the panel, what are you looking at? What social and educational change are you trying to bring about to these forums? Well, a lot of the questions that come up in these panels and in these forums are questions uh, which everyone's thinking about today or dealing with in today's space. Well, education is a dynamic space. How do we equip ourselves uh, in the right direction? So, when you have people who have experienced, uh, you know, certain challenges uh, in these areas or have found solutions. Uh, to uh, the challenges uh, that are there, or have uh, come up with creative ideas uh, to ensure learning is, uh, you know, meaningful for children. Uh, these are the discussions that come forth. Uh, there's a lot of thought, uh, uh, brainstorming, deliberation that actually happens through this uh, moderation, and uh, I think the audience that is sitting across. Uh, also picks up a lot of ideas. Okay, this worked for someone. I can take this back. So initially, right. what I was talking about collaboration. Yes. Well, this is one of the tools for collaborating and picking up ideas from around. So, as I started, so do I end. Right? Collaboration is better than competition. And we've heard it from Deepa. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being here today. Thank, Thank you. you.